I've gone bankrupt. I've went from having millions in cash to millions in debt. It's all because of Zhong Rong Trust, which on September 16, 2023, announced its receivership. By making my official bankruptcy, I used to watch videos on platforms where people talked about going from riches to rags overnight and thought they were just exaggerating for views or laughs. But when it happens to you, it feels like your world is crumbling. Your perspectives on life, the world, and values just collapse in an instant. I'm not making this video to ask for anything. I just want to warn other middle class people in China like me. Cherish your hard earned money and don't trust any top financial institutions. Don't believe in so called strict regulations or contracts. In the face of interest, they are worthless. When you have money, you have control and a say. But once your cash turns into worthless paper, no announcement or institution will step up to protect your rights. That's when your worldview shatters. In the storm that has hit China's financial sector, the financial crisis of Zhengzhi Group has become another high profile event following the collapse of real estate giant Evergrande. Known as China's largest private financial conglomerate, Zhengzhi Group recently fell into insolvency. Many investors have seen their investments vanish overnight due to the collapse of the Zhengzhi system and investment platform, leaving them with no recourse but to bear all the losses themselves. Mr. Li, a creditor from Tianjin, over 70 years old, still takes care of his spouse, who suffers from liver cancer and relies on crutches. They have consistently pleaded with Zhongzhi Group to return part of their life savings for the treatment of his spouse, but the leadership of Zhongzhi Group has yet to agree. Due to the lack of money for treatment and excessive mental stress, Mr. Li's spouse passed away on September 23rd. What about a life? Can he still live after what you've done to him? The anxiety you caused him, and it was his own purchase. He regretted it every day, supported me in advocating for my rights. I left him alone at home for a few hours, and there was no word from him. When I got back, I found him dead. If it weren't for this incident, if he hadn't been so mentally stressed, would it have come to this? You Zhongzhi leaders are so heartless. You ignored our difficulties, thinking we're liars and deceivers like you. You've dragged on repaying our money, and now my family is destroyed. I'm also a cancer patient, my spouse is gone, and I don't want to live anymore. I have a daughter suffering from depression and other health issues who can't work, and there's a loan of over 7,000 to pay. You hold on to your money and never respond, no matter how many times we plead. How are we supposed to live? Are you waiting for me to die too? In August, a netizen posted on Weibo that her father lost everything, having invested a large sum in the Zhongzhi Systems Trust. Unable to cope with this devastating blow, he committed suicide. Her father had invested in the lowest interest projects, which, if executed according to the contract terms, should not have led to a collapse. A client who had invested 70 million yuan with her entire family saw their investment evaporate due to the collapse, leading to an emotional breakdown during discussions with Zhongzhi Group. The collapse of Zhongzhi Group not only led to significant losses for domestic and international investors, but also left many unresolved mysteries, a huge contrast with its past prosperity. The conglomerate had numerous political and business connections, and many of these relationships have been gradually exposed since the event. The crisis began with a public letter recently issued by Zhongzhi Group, revealing that the group was insolvent and facing significant ongoing operational risks, with more debt than it can repay. The group's debt level has reached between 420 to 460 billion yuan, while the total assets are less than 2 billion yuan, indicating that its debt is more than twice its assets. This exacerbates the crisis in China's trust industry, which is worth 3 trillion US dollars. In addition to the debt of over 400 billion yuan, the 3.72 trillion yuan, approximately 531.4 billion US dollars, managed by the Zhongzhi Group has also suspended payment. With a debt of 3.72 trillion yuan, Zhongzhi Group has become the most indebted financial giant in China, surpassing Evergrande's 2.4 trillion yuan, Country Garden's 1.69 trillion yuan, and Sunak's 850 billion yuan. The Zhongzhi Group refers to the China Zhongzhi Enterprise Group, which holds stakes in eight listed groups and two mining groups. The core of the recent collapse of the Zhongzhi system is its financial sector, comprising four wealth management companies, Hengtian Wealth, Xinghu Wealth, Datang Wealth, and Gaosheng Wealth. Additionally, it includes five asset management centers, Zhonghai Shenrong, Zhongzhi International, Zhongxin Rongchuan, Zhongzhi Capital, and Shoutuo Rongsheng. The group also controls six licensed financial institutions, Zhongrong Trust, Zhongrong Fund, Hangqing Life, Hangbang Property Insurance, Zhongrong Huixing Futures, and Zhongren Jingfu. Combined, these institutions account for nearly 3.6 trillion yuan, about 510 billion US dollars. 
The financial products that trigger this collapse are fixed financing products under the Zhongzhi Group's financial companies. A typically low-profile yet impactful Chinese private enterprise giant, Zhongzhi Group faces staggering debt. Analysis by mainland media suggests that the collapse is largely due to its vast business portfolio encompassing real estate, finance, energy, and more. Before July 31st this year, 106 trust products under Zhongzhi defaulted, totaling about 44 billion yuan, about 6 billion U.S. dollars, with real estate investments making up 74 percent. The default in real estate investments is a major risk for Zhongzhi. Over the past two years, Zhongrong Trust under Zhongzhi has been involved in almost every real estate debacle, including at least 15 property enterprises like China Evergrande, Kaiser Group, and Sunak. Diversified investments have led to accumulated debts, placing immense financial pressure on this former financial giant. Another significant reason for the collapse is weak regulation of its financial products. The fixed financing products involved are non-standard, targeted financing pool products, inherently risky and subject to lax oversight. Zhengzhu Group, lacking bond issuance qualifications, avoided regulatory supervision by bypassing the China Securities Regulatory Commission and the China Banking Regulatory Commission. The group issued high-risk financial products without scrutiny by simply reporting to local financial exchanges. Since 2019, the financial products of local financial exchanges have been halted due to risk issues, but due to the simplistic reporting process, many products under Zhongzhi continue to be sold, turning these financial products into liquidity supplements, effectively creating a corporate fund pool. The group's main use of these funds was to take new debts to pay off old ones, leading to a breakdown in the corporate capital chain and ultimately insolvency and potential bankruptcy. The collapse of Zhengzhi Group was not without warning signs. Its founder, Jie Zhikun, who also controlled the company, died suddenly of a heart attack on December 18, 2021. Surprisingly, his family did not rush to claim inheritance rights, and to date, a successor for Jie has yet to be determined. Analysts believe that following Jie's death, Zhengzhi Group, like a ship without a rudder, was bound for trouble. Industry insiders say that Zhongzhi, which started with high leverage and low risk control, would have faced inevitable collapse even with Jie at the helm. Now Zhongzhi Group resembles a line of falling dominoes. The collapse of Zhongzhi has brought disaster to many investors, wiping out years of savings. Many are ready to take legal action, but this proves ineffective under the governance of the Chinese Communist Party. Beijing investor Wang Li expressed to the media on the 23rd that after seeing Zhongzhi's letter to investors, she felt only despair. She believes that Zhongzhi Group spent a year transferring assets and preparing, leaving only empty shells and bad debts for creditors, while ordinary creditors can only watch helplessly. Wang Li started buying fixed financing products from Hung Tian Wealth last year, investing over 2 million yuan, a small amount compared to many others who invested tens of millions. She was introduced to these products by a neighbor who worked at Zhongzhi's headquarters for over eight years and was a lower-level employee. This neighbor also invested several million yuan. Investors revealed to the media that Zhongzhi's internal staff, family members, and associated officials had already withdrawn their principal. The creditors now coming forward are ordinary people. A recorded conversation from an October 25th rights defense meeting at Zhongzhi Group's headquarters was provided by an interviewee. In the recording, an elderly woman from Beijing mentioned she bought products from Datang and Xinhu. She was supposed to receive full principal and interest payment by the end of June, but Zhongzhi Group has been delaying. When she personally sought the company's leaders, she received received only pleasantries and comfort, with no solutions. In the wake of the Zhongzhi Group's financial crisis, a recorded conversation has shed light on the company's dubious practices. The elderly woman in the recording recounts how a financial advisor asked if she knew any government officials, including those in tax, public security, police stations, and police departments. She was told that if she had such connections, she could report them to expedite the repayment of her investment. This revelation indicates that Zhongzhi Group prioritized repayment to government officials while neglecting ordinary citizens. Beijing investor Wang Li also shared insights into the situation. She was informed by an economic investigator at the Chaoyang District Police Station that institutions and individuals with insider connections had already withdrawn their funds in advance. Wang learned that in February and March of this year, Zhongzhi preemptively repaid the 71st phase of their products, including some a year in advance. According to her, Zhongzhi Group prioritized repaying her their own internal staff, family members, and influential individuals, including government officials and executives. This left smaller business owners, middle-income individuals like Wang, and seniors with their life savings as the primary victims.
As creditors like Wang Li pursued their rights, they gradually uncovered more about Zhongzhi's internal operations, realizing the extent of the trap they had fallen into. An employee revealed that staff who hadn't purchased financial products from Zhongzhi had already left the company, as those associated with Zhongzhi now struggled to find new employment due to the company's tarnished reputation. Those remaining are either managing large investments or hoping to recover their own substantial investments. It has been disclosed that the highest investment in Zhongzhi's fixed financing products reached 5 billion yuan. An internal source suggested this investor might be a proxy, someone who, for tax evasion or other reasons, preferred to remain anonymous and used others to invest in these products, exploiting the less stringent procedures for purchasing fixed financing products. Wang Li expressed despair over the progress of her rights defense efforts, saying that the Zhongzhi group is rotten from the inside out. She recounted the indifference of officials and the lack of effective action, highlighting the slim chances of recovering the lost funds. As of late November, the Beijing Public Security Bureau's Chaoyang branch reported that a case has been filed against Zhongzhi Group's wealth management company for suspected illegal activities and criminal measures have been taken. The same day, the Bureau's WeChat account announced that, apart from investigating the wealth management company, criminal measures have been taken against multiple suspects, including relatives of founder Jie Chiquin. Despite the legal proceedings, the government has not provided a solution for the repayment of debts owed by the group. The official response from the Chinese government has framed the incident as illegal fundraising. Analysts suggest that Zhongzhi Group's problematic financial chain was evident from its history. However, the government's silence and lax regulation allowed the group to grow and exploit the public. This might be linked to Zhongzhi's political connections. Zhongzhi's initial growth benefited from partnerships with state-owned and central enterprises. In 2002, Zhongzhi Group, in collaboration with entities like the Harbin Municipal State-Owned Asset Supervision and Administration Commission and Heilongjiang Mudanjiang New Material Company, established Zhongrong Trust Investment Company Limited in 2010. Jie Zhiquin transferred 36% of Zhongrong Trust shares to Jingwei Textile Machinery Company, a subsidiary of the central enterprise Hangtian Group, further leveraging state-owned and central enterprises to bolster the Zhongzhi Group. Jie then replicated this model across Zhongzhi's four major wealth management companies, Hangtian Wealth, Xinhu Wealth, Datang Wealth, and Gaosheng Wealth, continuing to rely on state and central enterprise support. The Zhongzhi Group's operational model and personnel choices are noteworthy. Ye Mao Kun, who took office as the president of Zhongzhi Group on April 15, 2022, was revealed to have worked for 25 years in the Supreme Court of the Chinese Communist Party. He served as the presiding judge in a well-known Xingda Zhuangsheng land case involving hundreds of billions of gold. At the end of 2020, Yen resigned from his position as a judge to join Zhongzhi Group as the chief risk officer. His rapid ascent from internal control officer to the top position raises questions. Furthermore, Wang Yungui, who resigned in 2022 as executive vice president and chief economist of Zhongzhi Group, had served as the director of the State Administration of Foreign Exchange. Niu Jianbin, the chief operating officer, was the former deputy director of the China Internet Network Information Center. These appointments suggest a close network between the Zhongzhi Group and high-ranking officials within the Chinese Communist Party. The founder of Zhongzhi, Jie Zhiquin, was married to the famous singer Mao Amin. Given the group's deep roots in China's entertainment industry, this connection has had a significant impact on the entertainment sector following the group's collapse. A stock market fund manager with over 400,000 followers claimed that the real reason behind the divorce of famous singer Wang Feng and actress Zhang Ziyi was their investment in Zhongzhi's trust. The collapse led to a loss of a nine-digit sum, over 100 million yuan. Besides Wang Feng and Zhang Ziyi, other celebrity couples like Deng Chao and Sun Li and Huang Xiaoming and Angela Baby, who are now divorced, reportedly invested tens of millions of yuan in Zhongzhi. Zhongzhi has long been involved in the film industry. In 2011, Zhongzhi Capital subscribed to shares in Datang Splendor and became a significant shareholder. It later invested in Zhongnan Cultural Entertainment, which established Zhongnan Films, a co-producer of the movie Dying to Survive, starring Xu Zheng. In 2019, Zhongzhi Group became the actual controller of Zhongnan culture, and its entertainment sector includes Mango TV and Bona Business. It was found by journalists that Huayi Brothers, a well-known private film company in mainland China, is a major shareholder of Zhongrong Trust and is likely affected by this crisis. Independent writer Zhuge Yangming told the media, Zhongzhi has been stable for many years, and its close relationship with the entertainment industry, coupled with Mao Amin's connections, made it a natural choice for high-earning celebrities to invest their money in Zhongrong Trust and other Zhongzhi platforms. The collapse of Zhongzhi will likely lead to substantial losses for many celebrities, and the rumors about stars like Zhang Ziyi incurring losses are probably not unfounded.
He emphasized that the collapse of Zhongzhi is a sign indicating the impending collapse of China's financial industry and suggesting that any investment in China is now fraught with risk.